So what he got. Let's get back to the story of the 1968 Mexico City Olympics. That's where he ended yesterday. Uh, after Tim won the um, Chinese uh, kickbox, kickboxing, kickboxing <laughs> national championship. Yeah, one home national championship. He actually won it in China, which is, like I said, again, pretty damn impressive. Um, so the next paragraph. The 1968 Mexico City Olympics marked the international debut of Dick Fosbury. Ah, Fosbury flop. I remember that from back in the day. That's, that's old school right there. Well, yeah, 1968. Uh, uh, his celebrated Fosbury flop. There you go. <laughs> Which would soon be which would soon revol revolutionize high jumping. At the time, jumpers swung their outside foot up and over the bar, called the straddle, much like a hurdle jump. It allowed you to land on your feet. Fosbury's technique began by racing up to the bar at great speed, taking off from his right or outside foot. Then he twisted his body so that he went over the bar head first with his back to the bar. Yeah, I've seen that quite a bit. I didn't know he invented that, so. But I had heard of the Fosbury flop, so. Now I know. Uh, while the coaches of the world shook their heads in disbelief, the Mexico City, City audience was absolutely cap captivated by Fosbury and shouted, Ole! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't take much to excite those Mexicans. The like guy going backwards over a, a bar. Uh, as he cleared the bar. Fosbury cleared every height through 2.2 meters without a miss. Oh, he had a footnote that I missed. When he talked about losing extreme weight by hyperhydrating and dehydrating himself, he had a footnote that I missed down on the bottom of the page. Most people will assume this type of weight manipulation is impossible, so I provided some sample photographs at www for spelt out f o u r our blog dot com. That's still alive, even though he started that in two thousand seven. That's still a living thing, and there's some good information on that. I'm not like a blog guy. I've been watching YouTube because I'm as lazy as the rest of you. So um, yeah, I mean I read books still, but I also watch YouTube because it's. Easier, faster, cooler, whatever. Um, but that, that still lives. The four hour blog.com still lives. Uh, do not try this at home. <laughs> he said the same thing I did. It's not fucking healthy. I did it all under medical supervision. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Still don't try it at home. Even under medical supervision, don't do that shit. It'll really, once you fuck with your body like that, it never really gets right again. And, and if you listen to him now, as a 40-year-old, he's got a lot of issues, like physical, because he did crazy shit to his body when he was writing these books. Because after this book, he did a book called The 4-Hour Body. And once again, great book, great information. Um, I actually plan to use his methods to try to get down to my goal. I'm, at, I'm still at 117, so it's good. I lost two kilos, which is four and a half pounds, but it's going slow. It's going really slow. I just got to be patient. Like I, I had oatmeal, fruit this morning, so I'm working on it. I did um, 30 uh, push-ups against the door, calf stretches, stretching my Achilles against the door. The exercise I started with the new morning routine, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago or whatever it was, so... I'm up to 30, uh, arms are burning, feeling it. It's been a long time since I've been in the gym. So even just a little bit of exercise is really uh, paying off and giving me good benefits right now. So I'm going to continue to do it. Uh, and then he achieved a personal record of 2.24 meters, so a six, six and a half foot, whatever, jumping, to win the gold medal. By 1980, 13 of the 16 Olympic finalists were using the five Fosbury flop. I think they all use it now. That's pretty common to see people go over backwards and arch their back and kick their feet up over. The weight cutting techniques and off platform throwing I used are now standard features of Sanshu Sanshu competition. There you go. He started a trend. The Chinese might not be the inventors, but they sure as hell gobble shit like that up and start doing it. Um, turn the fan on because I'm hot, but I'll try to get it off the mic. There we go. Uh, I didn't cause it, I just foresaw it as inevitable, okay, as did others who tested this superior approach. 
now it's par for the course. So now that's become standard common knowledge once he invented it, right? So there you go. There's that too. Sports evolve when sacred cows are killed, when basic assumptions are tested. And obviously it applies to everything, not just this. The same is true in life and in lifestyles, right? So question everything. That's a good thing. Things you got in trouble for, or I got in trouble for in school, um, questioning. The teachers didn't like that. Uh, they didn't. They didn't enjoy my questioning them. I was curious. You know, I was a smart kid, and I was curious, and I had questions. They didn't like questions. They just want to stick to the book, stick to the curriculum, and that's a large part of why the public um, education system in America has failed because they don't let you question. <laughs> questions part of learning, but that's not. You know, stick to the curriculum. I sat out in the summer and took my time for my twenty thousand dollar a year job uh, to come up with this curriculum. You will follow it. And obviously that's the wrong way to learn, that's the wrong way to teach, but as far as I know they're still doing it. And when they do do something innovative like the common core math, it's fucked up and much worse than the old style math. There was no improvement, it actually got worse. So, we're doomed. <laughs> Alright, uh, where are we at? Six minutes. So I'll read a little bit of the night. Obviously we're not going to get too far into this with only four minutes left. Challenging the status quo versus being stupid, okay? Most people walk down the street on their legs. Does that mean I walk down the street on my hands? Do I wear my underwear outside of my pants in the name of being different? Or no underwear? Commando. Yeah, let them, let them, let them hang. Let them flow. It's, it's Thailand. It's hot. Sorry about that visual. Um... Not usually, no. Then again, walking on my legs and keeping my thong. Tim, come on now, buddy. You don't, you don't, uh, no, no, no. Guys and thongs, no. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Uh, then again, walking on my legs and keeping my thong on the inside have worked just fine thus far. I don't fix it if it isn't broken. So, okay, so reinvent everything, question everything. Challenging the status quo, which is the heading of this chapter, yes. But if I don't fix it if it isn't broken, that's a good point. So locate prospects, step one, pre-qualify prospects. So when you go to the step two, is this a problem? Is the traditional way of learning Chinese kickboxing and tango dancing uh, broken? And in those two cases, it, it was. So he fixed it. If they weren't broken, there wouldn't have been an opportunity to fix them. And the Fosbury flop was the was the old method of clearing the bar the best, or was it? Not, and I wouldn't say broken, but did it have room for improvement? And it did. And now it's the standard, right? It gets replaced by something better. Not everything needs to be replaced with something better, is what he's trying to say here. Different is better when it's more effective or more fun. I really need to learn to shut my fucking mouth and just read because it's, it, okay, whatever. My bad, I'm sorry. Um, if everyone is defining a problem or solving it one way and the results are subpar, this is the time to ask, what if I did the opposite? Don't follow a model that doesn't work. If the recipe sucks, it doesn't matter how good a cook you are. Good point. Uh, when I was in data storage sales, my first gig... No pun intended. Yeah, gig. See what I did there? Storage, data storage, gigabyte. Oh, anyway, nerd, nerd humor. <laughs> Where's my tape? Where are my glasses to hold my glasses together? I've done that in my life. I've had tape holding the two pieces together. I admit it freely. Uh, when I was in data storage, first gig out of college, I realized that most cold calls didn't get to the intended person for one reason gatekeepers. If I simply made all my calls from 8 o'clock to 8.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock to 6.30 p.m. for a total of one hour, I was able to avoid secretaries and book more than twice as many meetings as the senior sales executives who called from 9 to 5. In other words, I got twice the recruits for one-eighth of the time. Twice the results, I'm sorry, not, not recruits, for one-eighth of the time. From Japan to Monaco, from globe-trotting single mothers to multimillionaire race car drivers, the basic, basic rules of successful new rich are surprisingly uniform and predictably divergent from what the rest of the world is doing. 
Yeah, we're at 9.50, just about 10, so I'm not going to get into it. Tomorrow will be the following rules or fundamental differentiators to keep in mind throughout the book. Retirement's worst case in scenario insurance. So I'll start that tomorrow. We're at 10 minutes. Time friggin' flies when you're having fun or when you're learning. Uh, got the new girl coming over tonight, to, and another overnighter. And I'm going to do a separate, I am going to do a video on it, finally I decided. And I'll explain in that video why I uh, hesitated. But I'll do a separate video on dating update. And she's coming over tonight, and I'm already fucking tired. I'm exhausted just thinking about it, but it's, I'm going to have a blast. So, of course, I'm going to do it. Have fun. Life is short, right? All right, y'all be good.